What's up, Champions Page? My name is Danielle Natoni, and I am so excited to chat with you guys tonight for this special week, helping you kick off February, kick off Team Cup, and get you guys results by working your power pockets of time. So I came on like two minutes early because I wanted to give people the opportunity to tune in. So let's just wait a few minutes. I know you guys don't sit on your phone waiting for things to go live. I don't know. Maybe you do. Hopefully you're off to a great Monday and your February is off to an amazing start. Let me know you're here by giving me some love buttons, some heart buttons, some thumbs up buttons, or tell me hi, tell me where you're tuning in from so I don't feel so alone here in my office. So Again, in case you don't know who I am, my name is Danielle Natoni. I'm a superstar diamond coach. I live in Frisco, Texas, which is the heart of Beachbody, where lots of uh, successful Beachbody coaches live. And I'm just trying to keep warm because it's super cold here in Dallas today, at least super cold to me. I get that it's not super cold for a lot of you guys who live somewhere really, really cold, but to me, it's cold. Thank you for telling me I look great. You guys, this was just, um, I'm really have on sweatpants. You see, <laughs> you guys all know how that works, right? It's a, it's a video mullet. So you're professional up top and you're party down below. All right. People are starting to tune in. That makes me really, really happy. So excited to talk to you guys tonight about these power pockets of time. So I'm a former elementary school teacher. For those of you that don't know my story, what's up, Saudi? And as a former elementary school teacher, I really want to give you kind of a outline of what we're going to cover tonight so that you can understand where we are or also in case you have to jump off at any point. So here's what we're going to talk to you talk about tonight. So I am really here as like your prep, your power hour prep. And the reason that we're doing this is because I want you to think about, I'm going to relate everything basically to our workout programs because that's something you can understand. So let's talk about even just 80 day obsession, right? You guys didn't just jump in on day one. You had to prepare to be obsessed. And if you look at every single one of our challenge group guides, what do they have? There's a prep week, which has you take your measurements and clean out your food and go grocery shopping and tell your friends and family about your goals, right? And that helps you get set up for success when you do start your program. So this is prep day or prep night for your power hour pockets. And what you're going to get this week are four different ways to do a power hour. We're calling them power pockets because what we realize is that you may not have a full hour. Maybe you have 45 minutes or maybe you have 20 minutes or maybe you have two hours because you condense all of your work into the weekend. So we didn't want to put a, a time on it. So we're calling them power pockets, the pocket of time that you have to work the business specifically on some of these different tasks. And what we also know is that lots of coaches do it differently. And you know what? There's not one right or wrong way to do it. And I'm sure you're finding that out as you're going through coaching, that there's lots of best practices, but what works for me may not work for you. And what works for, you know, Saudi may not work for Melissa McAllister and so on and so forth. So you're going to hear from different coaches on the system that works for them. You're going to try their system. And then guess what? You're either going to pick the one that you vibe the best with, or you're going to take pieces of each of those and create your own power pocket system to bring back to your team. So I really want to kind of prep you so that one, you can get the most out of this week, but two, because there are some things that need to be in place before you can even get started. But here's what we're going to go over tonight so that you can feel prepared for tonight's call. So the first things first, we're going to set our intention for the week. After we do that, we're going to talk about why power hours or power pockets are so vital to our business. Number three, we're going to talk about setting business hours. Number four, we're going to talk about setting timers. Number five, we're going to talk about our environment and our workspace. Number six, we're going to talk about our tracking systems. And then finally, we're going to end with duplication. And what I hope is that you will feel so prepared and so ready to get the most out of this week so that you truly can get results. Does that sound fair? Are we good? Okay. 
So here we go. You know, I actually did prepare slides and then last minute I decided, you know what, I'm just going to talk to you. So I have them like right here for me to kind of glance at. So if you see me looking down, that's just me checking out my notes and my slides. But I decided you don't need those. Let's just, let's just connect you and I. It's just me and you. Okay. So first things first, let's set our intention for the week, which is this. Nobody is telling you that you have to do it this way. Nobody is telling you that one of these is more right than the other. So what I want you to know is that I don't want you to go into this week and think that you have to change everything that it is that you're doing. This is just an opportunity for you to try something that is working for other coaches. Kind of like the national wake-up call. I hope that every week you don't panic and think, oh my gosh, I have to change everything I'm doing because Jen Richardson said X, Y, Z, and I don't do that. But oh my gosh, the week before that, you know, Melanie said this. That's what the national wake-up call is not for that, right? It's meant to give you inspiration and tips and maybe it sparks a new idea in your head or maybe you're going to change something, but it doesn't mean you overhaul your entire business. And so I don't want you, that's not what this week is. This week is not, okay, your power pockets of time are wrong or you've been working this business wrong at all. Okay, what this, the intention of this week is, hey guys, here are some successful coaches, here's how they do their power pockets of time, and let's see if that works for you. Let's see if there are some things in there that maybe will work better than what you're already doing. And because we're gonna come on live at the same time every night this week, you have the opportunity to actually try out, to implement right in that moment. They're gonna give you some quiet moments of time where they give you a task and you have to go do it and report back. And guess what? That's really cool. What if during this week, while you're watching these champion page videos, you sign a new coach, you sell a challenge pack, you hook up somebody with Beachbody on demand, you invite somebody to your next challenge group. Wouldn't that be incredible? So that's the intention for this week is to get you moving, get you action, but also to give you inspiration to take back to your teams and go, okay, you know what? This is how we're going to start working our power pockets of time. Cool? Okay. So let's talk about why power hours are so vital to our business. So, you know, I know I hear this from my coaches a lot of times when they sign up, they're so overwhelmed. You take a look in that coach online office and there's so much information in there. And then sometimes we give you so much information and you're put in all these groups, your coach group and, you know, and then you start following the TVB coach 411 page and you're in this champions group and then there's the national wake up call. And next thing you know, you are just overwhelmed with all this info and you know you have to invite, but you don't really know what that means. And they tell you to expand your network, but you don't really know how to do that. And so you kind of wind up just scrolling on Facebook. And then you wonder why you're not bringing any new people into your business. So power hours are really vital because they're just that. They're super specific pockets of time because again, they don't have to be an hour, where you are going to do those vital activities that are going to bring you business. Things like reaching out to people, expanding your network, sending hey girl messages, inviting people to your challenge group, offering the coach opportunity, those very specific tasks that often are scary. A lot of times those are the things that you don't want to do. So you're like, oh, let me listen to a call or let me watch another video because those things are a lot easier and a lot less scary than getting on here and typing a message to somebody that you haven't talked to in a while. That's scary. That person could reject you right? But that's why when we do these power pockets of time, we're just laser focused. And we're going to talk about that in a minute when we get further down the line in our prep week. Okay. I also want you to look at tonight as, you know, as a former teacher, I didn't just jump into teaching class. I had to prepare my lessons. Okay. And so that's what this is. We are preparing ourselves to have the most successful power pockets, but these power pockets of time are vital because they're going to be action items. It's not going to just be listening to a call. It's not going to just be watching a video. It's not even going to be just making a list. It's going to be actually talking to real live humans that have the potential of joining your challenge group or becoming a coach on your team. 
They're critical to our business. The only way that you are going to achieve success club, the only way that you are going to change lives, the only way that you're going to see your business grow is if you actually talk to people. And while it's so much easier to just kind of sit back and make a post and go, well, nobody messaged me. It really doesn't work that way, right? We have to reach out to people and we have to talk to them and that's scary. And so when we do power pockets of time, we can be a little bit more intentional. Plus, I'm guessing that a lot of you still work full-time jobs. I know when I started and I was a teacher, my power pockets of time were in 30-minute increments. And I had to be so specific with what I did in those 30 minutes because I still had the responsibilities of my children, of my full-time job, and then of building this business at the same time. So I didn't have time to just scroll on Facebook and Instagram. I needed to be super specific and make sure I was doing my follow-ups and making sure I was reaching out to people. So... Power pockets of time are also really critical because a lot of you still have so many other things going on in addition to your beach body business. So it is so important that we get these in. And if you're sitting there right now thinking, I've never done this, good. Then starting tomorrow, you are going to make sure that you and your team implement having power hours, power pockets, whatever you want to call them, power 45, whatever you want to call them. You're going to start making sure that you have these. Now, Power hour overwhelm, and I'm going to show you this picture only on here. Um, it was in my slide, but I just literally typed into Pinterest power hour, and all these different graphics came in from tons of different Beachbody coaches. And so that was the other reason that we wanted to come on this week and share with you how we're doing it, because there literally are so many different ways, and there is no right or wrong. Maybe you looked up a power hour, and it said to invite five people in 10 minutes, and maybe you looked up a different one, and it said to invite 20 people in five minutes. Like, there is no No right or wrong. So, you know, don't get overwhelmed with all the different information. You're going to find a power pocket of time that works best for you. Okay. So let's talk about setting your business hours. I hope you've done this already, but if you're not, I really need to think of you to think about when are you open for business, right? Like if you go to Starbucks at 3 PM on a Wednesday and they were closed, you'd be like, uh, what happened? Because their business hours are posted. So what are your beach body business hours? And I'm not just talking about our power pockets yet. We're going to get to that in a second. But your first assignment, if you've not already clearly slated this out, is what are your beach body business hours Monday through Sunday? And that might include that Sunday you're closed for business. I don't know. I don't know your schedule. But you need to get very specific with what are your beach body business hours? So when I was an elementary school teacher, I gave myself from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. for quite a while there to work my business. And I actually posted my business hours on the refrigerator so that my children knew when I was working. Our Monday night team calls were part of my business hours, and those were always Monday night at oops, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. So that was a business hour that was on my open for business. So I want you to think about that sign that says business hours, Monday, opens, closes. And you might have multiple windows of time, but I want you to write those down. Because if you try to work this business on accident, if you try to work this business when you think you have time, what you will find is that everything else will start to take precedence. And your family won't take you seriously. And that is the other reason why I want you to, number one, write out your business hours Monday through Sunday, including when you're closed. And number two, I want you to post them somewhere visible where not only you can see them, but where your spouse and your children can see them. Because then what I want you to do is stick to this rule. If I work my business between, let's just say, 7 to 9 p.m., those are my dedicated hours. Nobody can bother me during those times. But then before 7, you better be the best mom or wife or husband or whatever it is that you're supposed to be, and you better be off your phone, right? So I used to always say, if you'll just give me this time, I promise you'll get all of me 
after my team call. So I want you to write out your business hours and I hope that you're accountable to somebody. Okay. So, um, Catherine says, does it have to be daily? I'm a shift worker. No, of course not. These are your business hours, but I want you to write it out. So in other words, if you're a shift worker and you know that you're working 12 hour days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, then you're closed for business those days. But then maybe on Friday you are working like a 12 hour day on your beach body business. I can't write out your beach body business hours for you. Only you can. And maybe they're not set. Maybe they change week to week, but I need for you to write them down. This is an important step, especially it's important for all people, but it's especially important if you are juggling many roles, the more roles you are juggling right now. So meaning you have a full-time job, you have a spouse, you have kids, you have all these other outside things and you're trying to build this business, it is absolutely vital that you have written down what your beach body business hours will be. And it is absolutely vital that you share those with your family so that they are aware because that's treating this business like a business. Okay. So that's step one. Once you've done that, now we can figure out when will you do your power hour or when will you do your power 45 minutes. So this week, you know you're doing them at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern time if you're doing them live on the champions page. But once this week is over, that may not be the most optimal time for you. So what is that optimal time for you where you could get in a room, and we're going to talk about that for a minute, and get laser focused without interruption and do this power hour or do this power 30 minutes, whatever it is. So once you have written out your beach body business hours, your second task is to highlight or write down when will you do your power pockets of, of activity. This is when you're doing, you're inviting. This is when you are sending out messages. This is when you're expanding your network. When will that be? Okay. And again, I can't tell you how much to work your business right? How much you work directly relates to how fast your business will grow. So if you're only, if you feel like you only have time for one power pocket a week, okay. But if you feel like you can fit it in on every business day that you work, great, totally up to you, but you need to figure out when those are and you need to schedule those into your calendar. So whether you're using a paper calendar or a, you know, your eye calendar on your computer, I want you to actually put in your calendar power pocket or power hour, whatever you want to write. On my eye calendar, anything beach body related is blue. So for example, this call tonight was scheduled onto my calendar in blue so that I can glance at all the blue things and know what I'm talking about beach body related. So I need for you to write out those business hours, figure out what your power hour is going to be or your power pocket of time, and then I need you to schedule it into your calendar. And if you are using a digital calendar, I highly recommend color coding it blue so that you can very easily see when you are doing your beach body work. Cause see, I do that with my workouts too. All my workouts are scheduled for the week in blue because for me, that's part of my business behaviors. That's part of my daily business habits. So my workouts are in blue. My power hours in blue. My team calls are in blue. Anything that is beach body related is in blue. And if you use a paper calendar, then get a blue highlighter and highlight it. But I want you to write those out. And what I would love for a little bit of accountability is as you figure those out, I'd love you to come back to this post and share those with us. I would love for you to come back and say, for example, typing in the comments, you know, my business hours are Monday 9 to 12 and Tuesday 7 to 8 p.m., whatever they are. And then I'd love for you to say, I'm going to do my power hours at this time. Like come back to this video, to this post. If you truly mean business and are going to get very serious about doing these power hours, then I want you to come back to this post when you figured out your business hours and figured out your power pockets of time and reply here for accountability. Can you do that? Okay. So next let's talk about what to do once you are, um, in your power hour. Actually, that's a lie. I'm going to reverse things. Let's talk about where you do these power hours. Okay. So I get it when this, this office here is so amazing. I just got this office a year ago. Okay. Before that, the past six and a half years prior to, to that, 
I work this business between the cat and the couch, on my laptop, on the kitchen table, sitting on the floor crisscross applesauce, and heck, a lot of the time I still take my laptop downstairs and sit on the floor next to the cat because it's just what feels good. However, what I do know is, is that when I am working, and there are kids, and there's a husband, and there's a loud cat, I need to be in a room with a closed door so that I can work. And, and I need to tell those people, I'm working right now, please do not interrupt me, okay? So I want you to think about your environment. Where will you do your power hour? Will it be in a closed room? Do you have an office space in your house? If you don't, could you go into a closet, into a bathroom? Could you go into your garage? Where can you go where you will not be interrupted? Because I'm sorry, no matter, especially if you're a parent, no matter how much you tell them to not bother you, if you are in an open space where people are flowing freely throughout the house, they're bothering you. And you're noticing them. So you're not as laser focused on your activity as you should be. So I want you to start thinking about where will you do your power hours? Maybe you have to do these at a coffee shop. Okay, great. If you do it at a coffee shop, what will you do to make sure you stay focused? Will you glance out a window? Will you put on really big headphones and, you know, like, and sunglasses so nobody bothers you? What will you do? Where will you be to make sure that you are laser focused, that you are not being distracted by the outside world? And one of the recommendations I'm going to give to you for that is turning this thing right here on airplane mode. Turn your phone on airplane mode. If you're on your computer, turn your computer on do not disturb so that you will not be disturbed. So that you're not getting that notification coming through about who just liked your Instagram post. So you're not getting that notification that an email just came in. You know what? And the, the reality is this, like you can be fine for 30 minutes to an hour working. Put it in airplane mode and get laser focus. And some of you are having a panic attack right now. Like, oh my gosh, well, what if my kids need me? Or what if, what if, what if? So only you can decide that. But what I know is that I'm pretty sure for an hour of time, you could be uninterrupted. You know, we used to live in a time where we didn't have these every second of our life and we all survived. So I really would love to believe that you could work uninterrupted for one hour so that you could be super laser focused because it's so easy for this phone to go off for you to just glance over at it and you're like, oh, well, maybe I better check that. And next thing you know, you get sucked into the hole of being on Instagram and being on Facebook. I mean, it happens just like that. Oh, let me just quickly answer this message. And the next thing you know, another message comes in and now you're scrolling and then something else pops up and you're like, oh, somebody posted in the champions page and that looks really important. And you get off track. And that's what will make your power hour not productive. You want to accomplish the most things possible in this power hour. So where are you going to do your power hour? And what are you going to do to limit your distraction? So my best recommendation to you is to do it in a closed room where you are alone and to put your devices on airplane mode so that you can work 100% uninterrupted. So I'd love to know right now, before we move on, where do you typically work or where do you plan on doing this power pocket of time, your power hour? Because I want you to be super focused. I don't want you to have any distractions. I get it. Kids, even older kids, they still need you all the time. And so if you're just out there in the kitchen on the kitchen table, well, all the life is buzzing around, you're partially listening, you're, you're just not 100% into your activities. And we want you to get the most out of these power hours. So where will you be doing them? I'd love to see you guys comment and let me know where you are going to be doing them. Okay. All right. Next thing, setting a timer. So you are going to hear the leaders this week share with you how they do their power hours. And they may say, okay, you're going to do a certain amount of invites for five minutes. Okay, now you're going to go and, you know, search this certain hashtag for 10 minutes, whatever it is, okay? But I need you to actually set a timer, okay? And I'm going to use the example of being at school again. So when I was an elementary school teacher, I had a planning period, okay? And that planning period was 45 minutes. And in that planning period, I was supposed to grade papers and I was supposed to, you know, do my lesson plans and all these different things. 
Okay. But I only had those 45 minutes and I knew because there was a timer. I had to go take the kids to PE. Okay. And my planning period started when I got back and then I had to go pick them up from PE. Okay. So it was basically like having a timer, right? I had to take them somewhere and I had to pick them up and then I had to get all my work done in between in those 45 minutes. That was my planning period. So the same is true with your power hour or however long a time it is. You only have that one hour to get things done. And if the assignment is you have 10 minutes to message 10 people on your list, then I want you to set that timer that's on airplane mode on your phone for exactly 10 minutes so that you can get focused. And when that timer goes off, okay, whoosh, all right, on to the next task. And that's how you're going to stay really focused on what you're doing. Because you guys, we are, our attention span, I believe is like eight seconds. Seriously, like the adult attention span is legit eight seconds long. Can you believe that? Eight seconds. So if you don't set a timer, maybe you're messaging, do, do, do messaging, and then all of a sudden your brain wanders you're thinking about something else and oh you know oh maybe I should just jump on Amazon for a minute but if you know there's a timer and you're like okay the time is ticking I've only got 10 minutes I've got to get this done then you're you're more likely to stay on track okay also we don't want you on the same task for you know if you only have one hour of time to work your business in between you know kids and your full-time job we don't want you just doing the one thing in your power hour we want you to get to the very multiple different topics um, and activities that are on there. So make sure you set a timer. Okay. Now the other thing to decide is music or no music. Everybody works differently, right? So are you a person who works better with music? It's kind of like workouts. Believe it or not, I'm a workout purist. I do not put on music when I work out. I also do not put on music when I work in this office. And I don't know if it's because I teach group fitness and I'm just always surrounded by music all the time, but I actually prefer to work in complete and utter silence. Like the more silent it is, the better for me. But I know for a lot of you, that is not the case. I know for a lot of you that you work so much better with music on. Okay. So you've got to decide also, are you going to work to music or are you going to work without music? Okay. I want you to set your environment, get set up for success so that you can get the most out of these power hours. Okay. And if you choose to listen to music, like what is it? What motivates you? Is it gangster rap? Is it nineties hip hop? Like what is it that motivates you? Put it on, put it on real loud and then just get to work. Okay. So next, how are you going to track all this? Now, there are lots of different trackers. Like my team even has a tracker. There's lots of different trackers for how to track your power hour. Okay. But you have to decide, like, are you a pen and paper person? Are you somebody who loves spreadsheets? Do you need a cute and pretty little graphic? Like there are so many out there on Pinterest. So you have to decide how are you going to track? And I know that each of the leaders this week will probably share with you what their tracker is. But just like, you know, when, when people ask me, they're like, oh, you know, what is the best follow-up system or what is the best system for this? I always say the best system is the one that you're going to use. So, you know, if you're not going to track on an Excel spreadsheet, then I'm not going to give you one to use. But if you're a total pen and paper person and that works for you, great. But you do need some kind of tracking system to track exactly how making sure that you got through all these activities. Okay. So, you know, how many new people did you invite and who were they? Right. So writing down people's names. Okay. I, you know, I invited in Janie Sue and Billy Bob and you know, whatever their names were. And then if you followed up, okay, I followed up with, with Frankie and he said X, Y, Z, like taking notes in some way, shape or form. Um, like I said, whether that's paper or pencil is completely up to you. Okay. So how you track paper, pencil, totally up to you. And like I said, there are so many trackers on Pinterest. Like if you were to go to Pinterest right now and type in, and I did it before this call, power hour beach body, dude, it's just like nonstop trackers, like nonstop sheets. So whatever is going to, um, if my video keeps getting interrupted. Oh, I don't know why it doesn't look like it's getting interrupted on my end. Sorry. Um, maybe it's your Wi-Fi. I feel like mine is not, it's not doing anything. Well, I'm sorry if it's um, interrupting in and out. So 
Okay. And, um, so yeah, power hour tracker. So make sure this week that you track all the activity that you do. Okay. So here's the key too. once you have gone through this week and you've tried out all the different power hours and you've then, you know, decided, okay, I like a little bit, you know, from this one and I like a little bit from that one or whatever it is then your job is to duplicate that. Not only for your team, but for yourself. You can't do a power hour just once and be like, yep, I'm good, I did a power hour. You know, consistency is key in this business. What we do repeatedly is what brings us success. And so once you figure out how to do a successful power hour, then you need to keep doing it over and over and over. And if it ever stops working, tweak it so that it does work right? Success is consistency. So if you want to be successful, you've got to repeat these power hours over and over and over again. You can't just do it once. You can't just do it every once in a while. You have to do it as often as possible. Okay. Also, you've got to take it back to your teams. And if you're like, well, I have a small team. It's just me and one other person. Great. Do them together. Do the power hours live with your team. Get on a Zoom call, right? And then start it. And then mute when you guys go into action. And then when your first timer is up, get back on and go, okay, here's our next activity. And then click mute again. Do them together. So you've got to duplicate this not only with yourself, but as a team. Oh, I'm so sorry it's interrupting you guys. I have no idea why. On my end, it looks totally fine. So maybe this is like the scratched version of me. <laughs> I don't know. So the moral of the story is this. This week, in these live power hours, okay, invite your teams. Get on them. If you can't be on live at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, make sure you go back and watch the video and pretend like you are doing it live. Okay. Decide right now. Okay. I'm going to commit to doing them at 9 PM Eastern time this week, or no, I'm going to watch the next days and I'm going to watch the video and make that my power hour at 2 PM, whatever it is, schedule it so that you make sure that you're getting value out of this week first. Okay. And then from there go, okay, now my business hours are this. I've posted them for my family. Now I've decided that my power hour pockets of time or my power pockets of time are this. That's when I'm going to schedule them. And you guys schedule it like appointments in your calendar so that you won't miss them. Just put it on repeat for whatever it's going to be. Okay. And then decide, okay, I'm going to use, you know, Keisha's, um, I really liked her system. She's tomorrow. So I'm going to do that one and I'm going to do it with my team and we're going to track it using her tracker or we're going to track it using this tracker I created. Maybe you want to brand it for your team. Totally fine. None of us like this is all just, we're all sharing info, right? So there's nothing out there that says that you can't take a tracker that you like and tweak it and put your own little branding on it. Whatever makes you happy, whatever is going to give you the most value, whatever is going to make you consistently show up and do this on repeat and again and again and again. Make sense? So, you know, right now, I, I'd be curious to see too, how many of you currently are doing a power hour? I'd be curious to know how many of you are currently, like consistently in your business, do a power hour. And then on the flip side of that, I'd love to know how many of you are like, I've heard of a power hour, but I've never done one. You know, love to know. Share with me whether or not you've ever done a power hour before or if you've never done one. I'm, I'm curious to know what the majority you have done. A lot of you do a power hour daily. That's great. You know, there are tools out there like TeamZ um, that kind of help you with your power hour. You know, there's a free trial for that. I don't personally use it, but there's a lot of people on my team who do. I know a lot of people use Google. Um, there's lots of different ways that you can set up your power hour. Yes. Okay. Someone says, yes, they do it, but not consistently. Um, not as consistently as I'd like. And so here's the thing. If you're not doing something as consistently as you'd like, you're in total control of fixing that by putting it in your calendar. I don't know about you, but I live and die by my calendar. And if it is on my calendar, I am going to ensure that it gets done. Um, I've only do, done a few. They're really draining. I think I need a system that feels better. Yes. And here's the thing. If it doesn't feel right, 
tweak it and change it. And so that's what this week is for, is to give you some fresh eyes, a fresh opportunity to find a system that is going to work for you. Catherine says, I get lost in what to do. Great, now you're gonna have some different systems to show you exactly what to do in that hour. But you know, you guys don't get so stuck on like, oh my gosh, but am I doing it right? Because there is no right. As long as you are being intentional and not just scrolling on Facebook and Instagram, if you are actually like reaching out to people and starting new messages and growing your network, then you are doing the right thing. Okay, so it doesn't matter whether you send invites for five minutes or if you send 20 versus 10, not all of that is just like details, 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 details. But if you need somewhere to start, just start. Matter of fact, why not get off this call tonight? Why not get off this call tonight and go, you know what? I'm just gonna do something. I'm just gonna do something. I'm gonna take the next 30 minutes and I'm gonna invite 20 people to my next challenge group or I'm gonna start 10 Hey Girl messages or I'm gonna try to add 10 new friends on Facebook. I'm going to like and comment on 20 posts on Instagram. I'm gonna search the hashtag clean eating, whatever. Just decide because there is no right or wrong way to do this. All you have to do is take action. And that's what this week is gonna be all about. But it has to start with you being prepared. No differently than you take your before and afters, no differently than you clean out your kitchen, and get all the junk food out before you start a new program. We've gotta get set up for success for this week. So what are your business hours? When will you work that pocket of time? When? Did you schedule it into your calendar on repeat? Where will you do this? Is it going to be in your office? Is it going to be in your bedroom? Are you gonna to have to do it in a closet? Wherever, where are you going to have that quiet workspace where you can work uninterrupted? And will you do it with music or without music? And are you willing? Are you willing to put that phone on airplane mode so that you can have uninterrupted, focused beach body work hours? You guys, we live in a world where we are just pulled in so many different directions. And you know, one of the objections you probably hear a lot, and I still hear too, is I'm too busy, I have too much going on. But you know what? You can build this business in super small pockets of time. That's what I did in the beginning. Hell, I feel like, oops, am I allowed to say hell? I feel like that's what I still do now. Like just between all the different roles I have, even with my coaching business and with Beachbody Live and my kids and my husband, like I, and teaching group fitness, like I still feel like I'm working in pockets of time. And if I'm not working focused, then I'm not accomplishing anything. And so get really clear. Understand why are you doing this? And think about that too. Like, what do you really want? And you've heard that before, right? Like your, your why. Why are you doing this? Why do you want to build this business? Because then, for those of you that said you do a power hour, but not really very consistently, I bet you you'd be really consistent if you thought back to why you wanted to build this thing. You know, when I first started, I was so in debt. I was struggling so much in debt. And so I knew I wanted out. And I knew that the only way out was for me to work this business every chance I had with intense focus and drive, and actually I still work like that today. So schedule it in your calendar, share it with your family, let them know, hey kids, on Monday nights from nine to 10 p.m. Eastern time, I am working on my Beachbody business, so I cannot be interrupted, but I promise you, you have 100% of me right before that. We will eat family dinner, I will give you my 100% attention with my phone put away, but once I go into my office and I start working my power hour, I need to be left alone to work completely uninterrupted because this business is important to me and to our family. You guys, you should be talking to your family that way. Make them a part of the conversation. My kids were like five and nine when I joined Beachbody, and now they're turning 12 and the other one's 16. Like, it's crazy. They are a Beachbody family, and they know how important this business is, and so let your kids in and let your spouse in on why you need that un uninterrupted, focused work time. So... Can you do those things for me? I hope when I come back to this post tomorrow, I'm gonna see tons of business hours posted and tons of power pocket times posted so that I can see from an accountability standpoint that you are taking this seriously about what your 
working hours are. And I would love for you to post them up on the refrigerator in your house or wherever it is that's the central focus in your house so that your family knows. And I'd love for you to take a picture of that. I'd love to see a picture of your Beachbody business hours posted up somewhere very visible for your entire family to see. Set reminders in your phone. You guys, like this thing is this thing is like your virtual assistant. Set a reminder for those of you like, so you're going to put it in your calendar. Okay, these are my power pockets of time. Set a reminder an hour before that so that it tells you, don't forget, you've got your power hour coming up. You guys, use your phone to your advantage except for when you're in your power hour and then I want it on airplane mode if you're willing to accept that challenge. And I'd be interested to see how many of you are willing to accept the challenge of putting your phone on airplane mode while you work and putting your computer on do not disturb while you work so that you can truly be focused. So I hope that helps. Uh, I just really wanted you to get prepared for this week so that you could understand that our goal was not to come in and tell you how to do a power hour, but to give you options. To For some of you, you may never have done one and you have no idea what to do. Some of you have may have been doing them but feel like they need a refresh. Or maybe some of you are doing them really successfully and maybe we'll see this and go, you know what, those were great, but my system is still working fine. These are just opportunities for you to get moving and for you to take action in your business and to treat your business like a business. But we wanted you to see lots of different ways that you can do this so that you understand that there is no right or wrong way and you can pull and from the ones that make the most sense to you. But it all starts with being prepared. You don't jump into a workout program without taking your before and afters. You don't jump into a workout program before meal prepping, or at least not if you wanna be successful at it, right? So tonight is your meal prep night, okay? Tonight is meal prep for, for power hours. So get those business hours, schedule your power hours into your computer, mark them beach body blue, Set those reminders an hour before your power hours to go off so that you won't forget, okay? Get your work environment ready so that when your power hours come, you're clear, you're focused, and you are ready to get kick butt results. So I cannot wait to come back to this post and see all your business hours and to see all your power pockets. And I am so excited for tomorrow because I know Keisha is going to rock your socks off with her power 45. So she does 45 minutes. So the first one's not even an hour. Cool? Have a great rest of your night. I am so excited for you guys to get amazing results. And if you ever need anything, I'm super nice. Feel free to reach out to me. I am happy to help you. So Go get your prep work in, get set up for a successful week, and I look forward to seeing you guys all shine. Peace out.